What's up, party people? Welcome to Yoga with Adrian. I'm Adrian, and we're back on the foundations of yoga today with garland pose or malasana. This is an awesome pose for anyone who knows they have tight hips, and that's most of us, particularly in my culture, that sit at a desk or table and chair situation all day. Um, our posture really uh, gets cramped. Our style gets cramped, and so this is a great pose to just get you down nice and low, open up your hips, lubricate the joints, really great for digestion. Also really awesome for pregnant ladies. Um, so this pose is definitely for you if you're in a prenatal yoga situation, which if you are, check out our uh, new prenatal yoga program uh, that I did with my dear friend Hyla. Um, and we can talk more about that at the end, but let's get down and dirty. Let's not get dirty, but let's get down and open up those hips in garland pose. Going to start in a forward fold today and if you have a blanket um, or a towel um, it might be useful as we come into this pose especially first timers so here we go when you come into a nice forward fold you can come into it from sitting or you can come into it from standing and we're going to take a couple breaths here so you might walk the fingertips to one side and then the other you might clasp the elbows and rock a little gently side to side and then we'll bring our awareness to the feet. Walking the feet hip width apart or slightly wider. And then turning the toes out. Then I'll come up onto my fingertips here, take a deep breath in, and a nice conscious exhale as I bend my knees and slowly lower my sit bones, my hips, my buttocks down, down, down. So then you kind of look at the video here and you go, uh, that's not happening for my body. So here we go, a couple options. So sometimes just anatomically, we need to honor what our body is doing, saying, and how its structure is built. And so for a lot of times I find my friends who really just need to honor their body, it's about lifting the heels up. Now eventually it might just be that that posture that everything's really tight, the ligaments are all stuck from sitting in chairs and on toilets and and all the things that we do, particularly in my culture, to kind of um, work against a healthy posture. <laughs> so here we are kind of perhaps getting back down to our roots in the squatting posture. So in time, uh, all that to say, the feet might stretch out, we might begin to drop the heels like so, but for now, and even if your heels do drop, you might take a second or two to come up on the heels, and this might be first about the feet. So in the foundations of yoga, in this series, I, I freaking love it because it really just gives us time to break down the posture, but also really focus on, on um, you know, kind of a traditional way of looking at the postures of yoga, which is quite healthy and gonna keep you um, injury free. And that's by thinking of it from the ground up. So you might be here, you might be here, but we're all bringing our awareness to our feet. And then when the going gets tough, fixing our Mike, cleavage, excuse me. When the going gets tough, bringing um, it to the breath, you know? So rather than holding tight or getting frustrated, drop into your breath, that energy. Now, if you have a blanket or a towel, it's sometimes nice to roll it up here so that we can rest those heels that are lifted up on a little support. So we're not quite here. Maybe we're beginning to stretch out the feet and the ankles. Get a little energy, a little prana uh, flowing through the joints, and we can come here. Again, we might not master this um, particular shape right away, but that's okay. We're here to do the work and just be honest about what's going on. And slowly, as you begin to deepen this pose and connect to your breath, find the support underneath the heels or underneath the sit bones, you might begin to experiment with drawing the palms together at the heart. We call this Anjali Mudra. Palms pressing together. And then as we continue to grow the pose, I'll encourage you to connect to the action. So drawing energy up from the earth and then finding a little resistance here as we press the elbows into the legs and find this squeeze of the inner thighs, even the knees, in towards the heart. 
So that's kind of a lot if you're brand new to this posture, to be completely honest. In a class, I would invite this pose in stages. So if you're working on deepening your pose, I really um, encourage you to work on that push and pull, that resistance here, that squeezing in of the inner thighs and that pressing out of the elbows. We find this lift in the heart and this beautiful extension through the crown of the head. If you're not quite here yet, it's just something to look forward to, something to smile at and say, okay, I'm gonna work towards that or someday, or how cool, you know, my ancestors might have, you know, used to have dinner like this. A lot of cultures still eat and go to the bathroom like this. They have their babies like this. So just kind of connecting something a little bit deeper here, trying not to get too hard on yourself. Engage your abdominals when you need to for a little support and breathe deep into the belly. Super awesome for digestion too, if you can breathe into that lower belly. So a couple more breaths. We're here, we're here. We're lifted up in that froggy variation. In the traditional garland pose, the feet are actually together, the arches of the feet. And we will touch on this as we continue to grow the foundations of yoga series and the Yoga with Adrian more uh, intermediate and advanced practices. So if you're like, that's not garland pose, I do love your comments, but you don't really need to comment that down below because we're starting here nice and wide. And this is also um, the variation that you're more likely to see in a public Hatha yoga class. Who knows, depending on where you live and where you're at. but. Um, I like too that this series helps support you and get you confident and rocking and feeling good and safe and um, prepared to go rock out in a public class. So chances are you already come out of the pose <laughs> or you're ready. And to do that, we'll slowly release the arms wherever they are to behind us <clears throat> and come up to a nice seated posture with the soles of the feet on the mat. So if you're on your blanket or block, you might spill off now. I can stay on my blanket here. And then nice and easy, this is the chillest yoga pose ever. I'm gonna come onto my palms and I'm just gonna windshield wiper the legs back and forth. Let it stay there for a couple breaths. So I'm breathing into the front of the hip crease. I'm finding a little lift in the heart. Couple breaths to one side. Then you get a nice little booty massage as you send the knees to the other side. And a couple breaths here. Don't collapse, why collapse now? Stay nice and lifted. And then we can just rock a little back and forth. Cool, and we're done. All right, great work, my friends. Uh, again, if you're new to this pose uh, and you're feeling a little feisty or pissed off at me, <laughs> Uh, totally normal. We carry a lot in the hips and again most of the ways that we live our lives is not in this um, shape anymore. Used to be. Um, so I encourage you to maybe stick with malasana or garland pose as a practice. See what happens if you revisit this pose every other day or every day. You can favorite this video or uh, put it on a playlist. Uh, you can practice this while you're watching Netflix, even while you're reading a book. Why not? Um, and it's a great pose to do with children or, like I said, awesome for mothers-to-be. Um, if you have any questions or comments, you know I love hearing from you. Leave them down below. Share this video or any other yoga videos with your friends and let's spread the love. Take good care. Namaste.